Hello students, in our previous module, we discussed about potential energy and gravitational potential energy. And so far in this chapter, we have discussed about work and different form of energy and how work done gets converted into energy inside an object. We have also discussed about the mechanical form of energy that is your kinetic energy and potential energy. So here at this point, a simple question to all of you. In our everyday life, we come across various form of energy. So think of a situation where you are using electrical energy. So we know electrical energy we are using for lighting of our bulb, for running of your fan, TV or any other electronic gadgets. So in that case we see that electrical energy is getting converted into either your light energy or it is converted into heat energy. Now when this process is occurring, can we say that at the beginning of the process and at the end of the process, if you talk about the total energy of the entire system and the entire process, is there any change? Although the form of the energy has changed, can we say there is a change in the amount of energy? The answer is no. The amount of energy cannot be changed. That's what we know it as conservation of energy. And that states that energy can only be converted from one form to another. It can neither be created or destroyed. The total energy before and after the transformation remains the same. So to prove this, that energy remains constant, we will look at a situation, an example. So if you look at the picture, we have a building. Let's the height of the building be H and we have lifted that ball to the top of that height of the building and from there we will release that ball. Now dear students think, the height of the building is H, that means the ball has been raised to a height of H, that means there has been an increase in the potential energy. So when the ball is at the height, at the topmost height, we can give the potential energy of that object to be your mgh. Let's denote it that position as your position A. Suppose we denote it by position A. At this position, the potential energy will be highest, the kinetic energy will be zero. You must be thinking why the kinetic energy is zero? Because at this point, the velocity of the ball is zero. We have not allowed the ball to fall. We have only raised the ball to a height of h. Hence, the potential energy will be is equal to mgh. m is the mass of the object, g will be the acceleration due to gravity and h will be the height of the object. Now, if you allow the ball to fall, suppose it comes to a position of B, the height of that ball right now from the ground, if you take, it is less than H. That means if the height has decreased, the potential energy has also decreased. So reaching the height B, the object has reduced its potential energy. But from coming point A to B, it has acquired a velocity for which there is a increase in its kinetic energy. So the decrease in potential energy and the increase in the kinetic energy becomes equal. So we can say at point B, if you take the potential energy and the kinetic energy, the total will give us the initial energy. That means we can say here the energy is also constant. Because when you allow the ball to fall 
under gravity under the force of gravity at that time it will achieve certain amount of velocity so as it achieves certain amount of velocity we can say that there will be some amount of kinetic energy in that ball and we will represent it suppose the velocity is v then we will represent the kinetic energy as half into mass into the square of the velocity half mv square now there is a decrease in the potential energy but increase in the kinetic energy let's allow that ball to fall again from the point b to a point c on the ground let the ball comes back to the ground and let's indicate it with the position c now at the position c on the ground the height of the ball from the ground is zero and we take the potential of an object on the surface or on the ground as zero so here at this point the potential energy becomes zero but the kinetic energy becomes the maximum or the highest before coming just hitting the ground when the velocity the ball has not come to rest just as this the ground the velocity will be maximum and that we know from laws of motion so velocity will be maximum so we can say the energy which is there in the ball is nothing but the kinetic energy and we can say it is half mv square so now if you see the entire potential energy has converted into the kinetic energy so here at this point if you see at the topmost height h the potential energy is maximum and the kinetic energy is minimum that is zero and at the ground level the potential energy becomes zero but the kinetic energy becomes maximum so if you take the sum of this potential energy and the kinetic energy that will be remain always constant that means at the beginning of the process and at the end of the process the total energy remains conserved or constant there is no change that means energy cannot be created nor be destroyed it cannot increase it cannot also decrease it can only be transferred from one form to the another form here in this case the energy has transferred from potential energy to the kinetic energy i hope all of you understood what is law of conservation of energy and how the sum of the potential energy and the kinetic energy of an object remains constant during a process so if you want to express it in terms of an equation we can say that potential energy plus kinetic energy is equal to constant that is mgh plus half mb square will be is equal to constant now dear students it's time to solve a numerical related to your conservation of energy or related to this particular equation so here is the question in front of your screen the question is an object of mass 40 kg is raised to a height of 5 meter above the ground what is its potential energy that means at that height of 5 meter what will be its potential energy next part of the question says if the object is allowed to fall find its kinetic energy when it is half way down so here when the ball is allowed to fall it will fall that fall can be called is as free fall that means under the action of the gravity so the acceleration that we will take here is g that is acceleration due to gravity that is 10 meter per second square for the calculation we'll assume that so all of you can give a try to solve here i am coming up with the solution to this numerical so how can we solve it let's first summarize all the data so the mass given let's m is equal to 40 kg the height to which it has been raised h is equal to your 5 meter 
so the potential energy p e suppose we denote it then it will be m g h which is nothing but equal to 40 kg multiplied by 10 meter per second square that is the acceleration due to gravity and the height 5 meter so that will give us the value as 2000 joule so the potential energy at this height of 5 meter is 2000 joule now coming to the second part of the question so coming to the second part of the question is that to find out the kinetic energy of the object when it is halfway way down half the way means here the height is given 5 meter so half the way we can denote let us assume at h dash so we can write h dash is equal to h by 2 that is nothing but here 5 meter divided by 2 which is, is equal to 2.5 meter so in order to find out the kinetic energy if we can find out the decrease in the potential energy of the object from the height 5 meter to a height of 2.5 meter if you calculate the difference in their potential energy the decrease in the potential energy will get reflected in form of the kinetic energy so here let's calculate the potential energy at this height so the potential energy here it will be again m g h which is nothing but again mass 40 kg acceleration due to gravity 10 meter per second square and the height will be a 2.5 meter and if you solve it we get the value as 1000 joule now in order to find out the kinetic energy we will take the difference of the potential energy the decrease in the potential energy will get reflected in terms of the kinetic energy so here if you look at the difference the difference will give us the kinetic energy so we will write ke is equal to 2000 joule minus 1000 joule which is nothing but 1000 joule so here we get the answer as the halfway down the kinetic energy will be 1000 joule so this is how we see the potential energy getting converted into the kinetic energy now dear students if you try to correlate to the law of conservation of energy at the mid height the potential energy is 1000 joule and the kinetic energy is also 1000 joule so together it is 2000 joule and the beginning at height 5 meter the energy was also 2000 joule that means there is no change in the energy so energy remains constant i hope all of you understood this part so as we have already discussed about work and energy now the question is do all of us work at the same rate do all machines consume energy at the same rate the answer is no a powerful person can do certain work quickly than a weaker person a powerful vehicle can cover a particular distance in a less time as compared to a less powerful vehicle so here we define the rate of work is nothing but how fast that work has been done or how slow that work has been done so the rate of doing work is defined as power that means a powerful machine can do or perform certain work very quickly whereas a less powerful machine can do a certain work very slowly or will take much more time so in order to understand the concept of power let's take an example so here let's take an example here a crane is lifting an object of 200 kg to a height of 10 meter that means 
द क्रेन इज डूइंग सर्टन अमाउंट ऑफ वर्क टू लिफ्ट दैट ऑब्जेक्ट टू द हाइट ऑफ टेन मीटर सो वट इज दैट अमाउंट ऑफ वर्क डन सो द अमाउंट ऑफ वर्क डन विल बी इज नथिंग बट फोर्स इन टू डिसप्लेसमेंट हियर द फोर्स विल बी नथिंग बट द वेट ऑफ दैट ऑब्जेक्ट दैट इज मास इन टू द एक्सिलेशन ड्यू टू ग्राविटी एंड एज यू कैन सी द वेट इज नथिंग बट वन थाउजेंड नाइन हंड्रेड सिक्सटी न्यूटन सो इफ यू सब्सिट्यूट दैट इन द फॉर्मूला डब्ल्यू इज इक्वल टू एफ एस देन इट गिवस अस अ वर्क ऑफ वन नाइन सिक्स डबल जीरो जूल नाउ लेट्स टेक एन अनदर एग्जाम्पल सपोज अनदर क्रेन विल टेक बोथ द क्रेन विल लिफ्ट दैट सेम टू हंड्रेड के जी ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट टू अ हाइट ऑफ टेन मीटर बट द डिफरेंस इज दैट द फर्स्ट क्रेन विच यू कैन सी एज पेंटेड एज येलो टेक्स टेन सेकेंड एंड द सेकेंड क्रेन बी पेंटेड एज रेड वी कैन से टेक्स ट्वेंटी सेकेंड नाउ कैन वी से दैट बोथ ऑफ द क्रेन आर डूइंग द सेम वर्क द आंसर इज येस द ऑब्जेक्ट दे आर लिफ्टिंग ऑफ इज टू हंड्रेड के जी द हाइट अप टू हुईच दे आर लिफ्टिंग इट ऑफ इज टेन मीटर सो द अमाउंट ऑफ वर्क डन बाई बोथ द क्रेन विल बी इक्वल सो इफ यू पुट दिस वैल्यूज सब्सिट्यूट दिस वैल्यूज इन द फॉर्मूला यू कैन सी बोथ द क्रेन आर डूइंग सेम अमाउंट ऑफ वर्क दैट इज वन नाइन सिक्स डबल जीरो जूल नाउ द क्वेश्चन इज टू परफॉर्म द सेम वर्क वन टेक्स टेन सेकेंड एंड अनदर टेक्स ट्वेंटी सेकेंड सो आर दे परफॉर्मिंग एट द सेम रेट द आंसर इज नो द क्रेन ए डज द सेम वर्क एट ए फास्टर रेट विथ टेक्स लेस टाइम वर एज द क्रेन बी completes that work in 20 second that means much slow than the first so this expressing how fast the work has been done we introduce the term power and what will be the power here in this case if you substitute that value that will be work done divided by the time taken and in the first case you will find the work done will be 19600 divided by the time taken 10 second so the power will be 1960 joule per second and in the second case it will be 980 joule per second so the power for both the crane will be different as they are consuming different time so here we can summarize this all that power is defined as the rate of doing work or the rate of transfer of energy if an agent does a work of w in time t then the power is given by work by time work the si unit is joule time si unit is second so the unit for your power will be joule per second which is nothing but express as watt the unit of power is watt so dear students i hope you have understood how to define rate of work or how to express the power so in order to understand it with more clarity let's take up some numericals related to it so here is one question two girls each of weight 400 newton climb up a rope through a height of 8 meter we name one of the girl as a and the other girl as b the girl a takes 20 second while b takes your 50 second to accomplish this task what is the power expended by each girl so we will use that same formula 
power is equal to work by time first we will calculate the amount of work done by both the girl the girl a and girl b then we will find out the power of them as the time has been mentioned you can also give a try and let's look at the solution to it so here for the first girl or girl a suppose we write it as the first one is girl a the force applied is nothing but 400 newton the displacement of is nothing but your 8 meter that means the work done will be is equal to f into s that means 400 newton multiplied by 8 meter that will give us a value of 3200 newton meter or 3200 joule this is for girl a the same way we can calculate it for girl b as the force applied is same displacement is also same so for the girl b also will have the same amount of work which is nothing but 3200 joule but the power will be different because the time taken by girl A is different and girl B is different. So, let us look what will be the power. So, for the first girl, if you see for girl A, the power we can calculate as P is equal to W by T. The W here we had calculated as 3 to double zero joule divided by the time is your 20 second and that gives us 160 watt and for girl b if you want to calculate the power so let's denote the power of the girl b as pb that is nothing but work by time the work done was 3200 joule divided by the time taken by girl b is 50 second so the power will come it as 64 watt that means if you compare the power of girl a with power of girl b both of them are doing same work the power is different power of girl a is more as compared to power of the girl b because girl a completes the work in a less duration of time hence power will be more. So, I hope you understood and you are able to solve this numerical also. Next, let us take another numerical. Suppose a boy of mass 50 kg runs up a staircase of 45 steps in 9 second. If the height of each step is 15 centimeter, find his power. So, how to solve it? Mass is given. We can find out the force. That is nothing but mass into acceleration due to gravity. Number of steps is given. Time duration is given. And height of each step is given. So, let us solve this. Look at the solution. So, here the force is nothing but mass into acceleration due to gravity. Mass was given as 50 kg. Acceleration due to gravity, let us assume as 10 meter per second square. That will give us a value of 500 Newton. Now, the height of the staircase, let be h. The total height be denoted by h each step is nothing but your 15 centimeter so we'll express it as in terms of meter so that will be 15 by 100 meter multiplied by the total step was 45 hence the height if you solve it comes as 
सिक्स पॉइंट सेवन फाइव मीटर द टाइम टेकन टू क्लाइम दिस पर्टिकुलर हाइट इज नथिंग बट योर नाइन सेकेंड सो लेट्स टी इज इक्वल टू नाइन सेकेंड नाउ एज यू नो पावर विल बी इज इक्वल टू वर्क डन डिवाइडेड बाय द टाइम सो वर्क डन विल बी इज इक्वल टू एम जी एच टाइम इज टी सो वर्क डन विल बी इज इक्वल टू एम जी वी हैव ऑलरेडी कैलकुलेटेड इट्स फाइव हंड्रेड न्यूटन मल्टीप्लाइड बाय द हाइट इज सिक्स पॉइंट सेवन फाइव मीटर डिवाइडेड बाय द टाइम इज नाइन सेकेंड एंड इफ यू सॉल्व इट द आंसर दैट यू विल गेट इज नथिंग बट थ्री हंड्रेड सेवेंटी फाइव वाट so the power of that boy to climb a steps of 6.75 meter height will be 375 watt there are plenty of numericals given in your ncert textbook ncert example you can solve them that will help to understand the concept in a better way now in our everyday life also we are using energy in our household specifically if you talk about electrical energy so the electrical energy that is consumed in our household by the use of different electrical appliances is a very large quantity so in order to express this quantity we cannot use joule the unit joule is too small and hence is inconvenient to express a large quantity so that's why we need a bigger unit so that we can express this large quantity of energy and here we use that bigger unit which is nothing but kilowatt hour so how do we define it how do we calculate that so 1 kilowatt hour energy is used in 1 hour at the rate of 1000 joule per second suppose you have a device which consumes 1000 joule of energy per 1 second and if you run that device or machine for 1 hour the energy that will be consumed by that device will be expressed as 1 kilowatt hour that means when a machine consumes 1000 joule of energy per 1 second then the power will be 1 kilowatt so the total energy that it will consume in 1 hour that means 1 hour means 3600 second so if you multiply that 1 kilowatt is nothing but your 1000 watt multiplied by 3600 second that gives you 360000 joule or we can express it as 3.6 into 10 to the power 6 joule so that is the commercial unit that we use and in commercial we say 1 kilowatt hour is nothing but 1 unit so dear students this is how work energy and power is related to each other and this is how we find the uses in our day to day life so we will conclude our lesson here let's recall what we discussed so far we discussed how work gets converted into energy and stored in an object how potential energy gets converted into kinetic energy and how your potential energy and kinetic energy for a process which involves an object remains constant at the beginning of the process and at the end of the process and we discussed about the rate at which work can be done so before we conclude let's take up the last final question for the module so here is the question for you 
an electric bulb of 60 watt is used for 6 hour per day calculate the energy consumed by the bulb so it's very easy the power is given 60 watt time is given to you so power into time is nothing but energy because power is work by time work is nothing but your energy that means power is ultimately energy consumed in a given duration of time so here we need to calculate the energy consumed by the bulb in 6 hour if the power is given to us 60 watt so how will you calculate that let's look so the energy will be is equal to power into time power is given as 60 watt multiplied by 6 hour so if you want to express in in terms of kilowatt hour let's convert it into in terms of your kilowatt so in terms of kilowatt it will be 0 0.06 kilowatt multiplied by 6 hour which is nothing but your 0 0.36 kilowatt hour so the energy that will be consumed by the bulb in 6 hour will be 0 0.36 kilowatt hour so dear students read the chapter thoroughly revise the concept solve the numericals related to all this concept and that will help you to understand this chapter in a better way take care thank you